Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of The Sheehan Show on Sherdog.com. And I'm delighted again to be joined by Ian O'Neill uh, from SevereMMA.com, the Ultra Angle podcast, and lots of other podcasts as well over on Severe MMA to look ahead to 1X, which is a massive one of uh, championship card going down this weekend. In fact, it's three cards that one championship all have on one day. If you're a fan of all of the mixed martial arts or the, the martial arts, even this, you know, this is the one for you. There's Muay Thai, there's kickboxing, there's uh, mixed martial arts, there's grappling, there's mixed rules. There's a bit of everything. Now, normally, I look, I'm very much a, a mixed martial arts type of person. I'm not the most, the biggest fan of all the other rules uh, by themselves. Although, if there's a great fight, it's a great fight and I watch it. But I love something like this. Like, I, I remember even we do it here in, in Ireland, that, uh, you know, the odd time, our, our cage legacy here. They do a bit of kickboxing, they do a bit of grappling on their MMA cards. And when you're there and you're watching live, it's it's always fun. And this is on obviously another level. And I, honestly, I'm really looking forward to it. I brought in Ian. I know Ian's a big kickboxing fan. He's a big grappling fan. He's actually out in uh, out in Thailand, where uh, Rotang is from, and where Rotang fights out of. Uh, I, last year, I know, so he's a big fan of him and a big fan of lots of this, uh, these uh, kickboxers and stuff as well. So we will cut through most of the MMA fights, but we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Ian, how excited are you for this card this weekend? I like it's one to me that it snuck under the radar a little bit when I looked at this card. These cards, it, it feels like it feels like a month of MMA all in one night. It's hard not to get excited by it. It is like I mean, this was supposed to happen in December last year, I believe, and then obviously for uh, the pandemic reasons, it kind of got held back, and I think it got pushed back again. So I mean, it kind of came under the radar because it feels like we've been talking about this fight for a long, long time. And for me, this card excites me because it just takes me back to the old Pride FC days, where you just have a mixed bag of everything, and it's something when. The, uh, you know, I, I w- didn't have the pleasure of watching too many live Pride events, but I got a couple at the end and I went back and watched almost all of them. And something it's just something about the magic of these events where you have a mixed bag of everything that you can. I, I'm just buzzing for this card and especially the big one between Mighty Mouse and Rod Tang uh, as, as the uh, kind of unique rules fight. Mm. Uh, that's the one I'm really uh, most looking forward to. Although the top four bouts on this, I'm really, really looking forward to them, and we'll break them down in, uh, I suppose, in in in, uh, in a lot of depth in in a second. Let's touch on the first two cards first, though, and just kind of give you a quick run through of what they have. You can see, I'm sure the, the link will be in the bio and stuff here. That it's it's up on uh, on Sherdog and it's on the One Championship website as well. Uh, the two grappler matches I think that stick out on the first card, uh, Rinner the Ritter against Andre Galvao, who, you know, Galvao is a top-class uh, jiu-jitsu artist, even if you're not as up to speed with jiu-jitsu as someone like me. I think we've even heard that name. Uh, and the Ritter, obviously, is one of the uh, the top guys over in one FC at the moment. Watched a few of his fights preparing for this, and this guy is really good on the ground and, and everywhere. His takedowns, his jiu-jitsu is fantastic. And then Daniel Kelly against uh, uh, Mei Yamauchi as well, who obviously has been around for a long time. I know the Galvao, the Ritter one, is one that stuck out to you in. Is that you know, something that you would be looking forward to seeing someone who is a very good grappler in MMA kind of going in there with a, a good grappler grappler. Yeah, I guess it is. I know the Ritter, he's a, a really, really good mixed martial arts fighter. If you don't know him, you definitely should check him out. He's going in here, you know, and, and I guess Galvo, who's the elite level of the elite level in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists, uh, you know, he's going in there, with the kind of confidence and knowing that he doesn't have to worry about taking any shots in this fight. He's going in and he can just concentrate on his grappling. And I'm excited to see it. You know, it'll be in, it'll be in the cage. Uh, it'll be different surroundings for Galvo. Uh, uh, be interesting to see how he handles it up against the cage if he finds himself there. But, you know, it, just a, a fun grappling fight that, you know, I probably would expect Galvo to get the win there considering that it's just straight jujitsu. I think that's an interesting one as well. Uh, the fact that it is in a cage, because I think the MMA fighters and the you know the uh, the seasoned MMA fighters have a massive advantage here. Because maybe it's not something you think of, but I remember watching you know the the card I spoke about earlier, watching MMA fighters grappling against grapplers in a cage. And when you get against the cage, a lot of time the grapplers you know they they go off the mats or whatever, and they're looking to be put back in the middle of the mats. Whereas the MMA fighters are used to control and you know about against the cage. 
And maybe yeah. that's an advantage here for the Ritter. In you often seen it uh, with a lot of the Asian fighters who would come over to fight in, in the likes of Bellator and the UFC as well, who would have came up fighting inside of a ring. So it's something that you wouldn't really think of that would have play a big difference, but it actually does in, in getting fights to the ground. And, and the cage work is very important. And we've seen time and time again, some fighters can struggle with that. 100%. There are some mixed martial arts fights as well, and some very good ones. I know Stephen Lawman, who's been around for a long time, uh, he's fighting uh, Shoko Sato and that Amir Khan, who we've seen, not, not that Amir Khan, the other Amir Khan, we've seen uh, lots of the cards out there. He's fighting uh, Ragoya Takashi, uh, Paul Elliott's on the card as well, and then on the kind of the second card, uh, Itushi uh, Hirata is fighting on that. We have a few other fights as well, a few in the uh, anime division as well, which is always good to see Sohi Ham uh, is uh, on that card as well. But you want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, kickboxing matches. I know Nicky Holskin is a guy who is is a name that even people like me who don't know much about kickboxing know. I've seen a good few of his bouts at this stage. This guy He's an absolute animal. You're looking forward to this one, I take it. I really am looking forward to this one. I mean, Nicky Holskin, you know, he's fought the who's who in, in glories, won, won glory belts, uh, won glory tournaments, and just a really powerful technical old school Dutch striker. I mean, we we look back at uh, all those old kickboxers like Raman Deckers and everybody like that. Uh, you know, Nicky Holskin is, is kind of the new breed of Dutch striker and uh, always in exciting fights, um, throws everything with bad intent. And, and it's going to be fun here to, to see him go in there against Morisatov. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I, like, I think the, if you look at the, the title fights, there's, a couple of kickboxing, uh, there's a World Grand Prix featherweight title fight on the line, there's a World Kickboxing title fight on the line, there's the Muay Thai bantamweight, uh, there's a, a kickboxing bantamweight title, so if you're, a, yeah. if you're a fan of the standing arts, you're a fan of that, any of them stick out to you in anyone's there that you think people should uh, be uh, keeping an eye on? The tournament championship uh, at 155 pounds is the one that uh, stands out to me. The, these two guys, uh, Alizov and uh, <laughs> the song. Pinong to, to stong Nailed Pinong. it, absolutely. <laughs> correct. That is correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, dude, those two guys, uh, um, they've came through the quarterfinals and the semifinals, still meet in the final. Um, you know, uh, Sistong King Pinong is uh, obviously a phenomenal Thai boxer who has ma- amassed over 150 fights, uh, very technical, came up through the light over in Bangkok. You know, you're not coming through, through uh, you're not going to be a big Thai boxer without coming through some of the bigger stadiums in in Bangkok, and um, and he's done just that. Um, Alizov, he is um, a Georgian uh, Muay Thai kickboxer, a very powerful guy. My, has real knockout power in both of his hands, uh, and comes at his opponents with real ferocity. He's got a couple of knockouts on his belt recently uh, and including in this tournament, one in the quarterfinal against Sami Senya and then one in the, in the semifinals against uh, Joe Nat- Natabut. And um, yeah, he's, that's a fight that I'm looking forward to seeing. Just it'll be pure raw, um, raw stand-up fight and it'll get us nicely warmed up for the rest of the card. Indeed, 100%. Uh, we'll, so there, there's lots obviously to unpack there we run through it pretty quickly but if I'm sure if you're a fan of that you'll be tuning in for it anyway because there is you know some high level stuff there uh, about I'm looking forward to as we get kind of to the, the, the main card here and I believe I, I heard uh, Shatri talking uh, this morning I think he was talking to John Morgan he said the, the first two cards are on YouTube for free so that's you know that's great and I think the main card is on uh, pay per view on the new one championship um uh, website or whatever it might be, so I'm sure he'll be able to to find that. Uh, and you know, it's it's a pretty big card for him. And he, you know, he kind of said we we're trying out. We'll see how it goes. So it'll be interesting to see how that there goes. There um, will be loads of entertainment on there. And uh, just yeah. before we move on, just so people don't get confused, you have the tournament championship, which was at lightweight, which we just spoke about. You have also mm-hmm. the one lightweight championship where Super Bond is taking on Marek Gigorian. Um, Super Bond is actually a training partner of Bukow, who is probably one of the most well-known, most famous Thai boxers that has ever come out of Thailand. And uh, that would be also a good fight. So, you know, we'll have two lightweight titles in a row. One will just be for the straight championship. One will be for the tournament championship. But both of them will be equally good fights. 
I think they're featherweight though on one, aren't they? One fifty five is featherweight. That's, I, yeah, that's it. Yeah. They're featherweight. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. We will, uh, you know. So if if we're if we're even confused, we're probably confusing me even more. What do you think <laughs> of Edward Fanglong versus John Wayne Parr? Because you know, I went to watch some of his fights. Obviously, we know him from fighting Eddie Alvarez and all, and everyone knows John Wayne Parr at, at this stage. And you know, is it is it his hundred win? John Wayne Parr is looking for. He's been around since God was a boy. He was in the hospital with COVID there not too long ago. He's coming in against Fang Long, who is you know young in his career compared to compared to uh, uh, John Wayne Parr. Uh, uh, anyway, even though he's been around for a good while, obviously mainly fighting in uh, in MMA for the last few years. But watching some of these fights, he is a guy who can kick really hard. He is a guy who could throw those spinning kicks and, and flying knees and everything like that. To me, that one has fun written all over it. Like for as long as it lasts, it's it could be a a shootout, and it's you know a uh, might I fight. I think between obviously you know a, a well known kickboxer and a guy who brings a lot of might I to the MMA cage. That's a, that should be a fun one, shouldn't it? It's going to be a fun one. I mean, John Wayne Parry doesn't like taking easy fights. Never did. I never will. He says that he wants to get his 100 win before he was retired or he's labeling this his retirement fight. But I'm sure I've seen somewhere down along the lines he has a couple of more retirement fights in the past. So I, I, John Wayne Parr is a guy who, who obviously loves to fight and finds it hard maybe to step away. But he's saying this is going to be, if he picks up his 100 win, this will be his retirement fight. Foyle Lang, uh, you know, ask Eddie Alvarez how how hard he kicks because he absolutely destroyed Eddie Alvarez in in a mixed martial arts fight with the, um with with some leg kicks and yeah Eddie Alvarez was forced to 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 retire in that fight because he couldn't continue so he kicks like a mule for a lang uh, John Wayne Parr look at coming to the twilight of his, of his career it'll be interesting to see how he go, go, goes on in, in in this fight here but. A legend of a legend of uh, kickboxing, legend of Muay Thai. John Wayne Parr is always fun to look at. One hundred percent. Right. Let's get to these big MMA fights because I'm really, really excited about these. You know, this is this is what I'm tuning in for. This is what I want to watch. And we'll we'll get to the. We'll, I think we leave Demetrius uh, till till the end, and we'll that because that's a special one, and it, and it should be special. A very interesting fight, Shin Yaoki versus uh, Yashahiro Akiyama. You know, if maybe new fans of MMA with, you know, maybe the McGregor era and things like that. Might, they probably, uh, they might have heard of Shin Yaoki because he's been around being mad for the last few years. But Akiyama, you know, he retired from the UFC in 2015. He came back. He had a couple of fights uh, in uh, in one championship. He had one in 2019, one in 2020. He was supposed to have one uh, in 2021 uh, on the... Um, the American card, the TNT card, but that was uh, cancelled. So he's only had the two fights in the last seven years. But before that, you know, he was he was a very good fighter. He beat Alan Belcher back in the day in the UFC. And, you know, he had big fights against Bisping and Chris Lieben. You know, went the distance with Bisping, went the distance with uh, with Jake Shields. You know, has a win over Melvin Manhoof and and other people as well back in the day. This guy was a big star. I think he was, I think over the age as well, he's like a big, uh, he's kind of a rock star, a pop star as well over there, and a very, very good fighter. And uh, it's it's interesting. This is at welterweight at 170 pounds. Obviously, back in the day, he would have fought Bisping at 185 pounds. And, you know, Shinya Yoki is, is not the biggest in the world. Um I I think he'll have a, a big size advantage over Shinya Yoki, even though Shinya has been fighting at 170 pounds as well. But in an MMA fight, I, I th- look, I think this is what one was. If you look at Shinya Yoki and look at his record, he's a lot of submissions. Obviously, he's, uh, you know, his, uh, uh, his grappling is, is second to none. He's 31 wins uh, in his career by submission or something around that anyway. And, you know, um, Akiyama has kind of split between submission and, and knockout. Uh, look, I think this comes down to two things. I think it comes down to the size of um, Yoshihiro Akiyama, and I think it comes down to maybe the use of Shin Yaoki, even though, you know, he isn't that young. But compared to uh, to Sexy Yama, he, you know, he is relatively... I know he had a grappling match last year. He had two fights last year, and he had two fights in 2020 as well. So he has been... Um, yeah, or uh, one grapple match, one fight in, in 2020. So he has been keeping uh, keeping active. How do you see this one going? I, uh, like, it's one of those ones that it's not the best fight on the card, but it could... I, I'm interested to see what it could turn into. Like, is it going to be another flying arm bar or something by Shinya Yoki? Well, there's a lot of bad blood coming into this fight as well, which kind of adds into the mix as well. I think Shinya Yoki has been looking 
for this fight for many, many years. And uh, he famously came out last year after a grappling uh, fight that he won where Akiyama was commentating on it and asking him and begging him to take the fight. Why hasn't he signed up to take the fight? Aoki was quoted as saying, my life is full of suffering. I'm training and we don't have long left. Take the fight. Let's do it. Akiyama has taken the fight. He's taken up his offer. Um, this fight, for me, what kind of a, a fighter is Akiyama at 46 years of age right now is the big question. You know, Shinji Aoki is relatively older too, but he's he's 38 years of age, I believe. Um, you know, the two two fighters are coming to the twilights of their career, but the bit of bad blood, the size difference, they're all little, little facets that, that make this fight very interesting for me. I mean, Shinji Aoki is is known for his leg locks and his famous coloury pants when he used to wear it in all all places where he's fought before dream and and pride fc i mean it's it's hard to know and it's hard to get a gauge akiyama is only coming off a knockout win in his last fight so you know he still has that power so i think he's going to want to come into this fight and try to keep it standing uh, he's going to try and use his size and use his power against someone like Shinya Yoki. And obviously, we know what Shinya Yoki is going to do. He's going to do what he always tries to do, and that's take the fight down and make life uncomfortable down there and go and get the submission, get the choke, get the leg lock, get whatever he can get. He he, he loves the submission. We've seen that time and time again. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited for this one because, yeah, there is a bit of bad blood. It's two legends going up against one another. And that's what they're labeling this. They're calling it the legends fight. And, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting fight. It's all about how Akiyama can get down to the weight, keep his cardio in check. Because, it's like, you know, at 46 years of age, cutting down that weight is not ideal later in your career. Uh, will he have the cardio? But will... Shinji Aoki have the strength and have the cardio to keep the bigger, stronger man away from him. So, I mean, it's an interesting fight. Uh, speaking of Freilang, uh, Aoki's just got a win over him in his last fight uh, in mixed martial arts. So, you know, that's a decent opponent to have a win over. So, uh, it's I'd love to be able to predict this, but I just I think it's one of those fights that is kind of a little bit unpredictable. Uh, it it is. I- I find it hard to go against Shinya Yoki because you say, okay, he's not the, the youngest in the world, but he is a little bit younger. And I think that speed, especially if the fight does go to the ground, if he can get on the back or if he can get an, an arm bar uh, or something like that, I, I I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like that could be the way forward for him. Let's move on quickly here to the, or slowly, but we don't have to move quickly, to the one flyweight uh, tile file. Because this to me is a great, great fight. You know, Adriana Moraes, uh, in his last fight, he beat Demetrius Johnson. And, you know, he's been out of the cage. There's been rumors, what's he going to do? Where is he going to? Is he going to fight in one again? I know Shatri was on with Ariel there a few months back and said they'd squashed all of that and there's no more. And, you know, he's coming back and he's fighting. So that's, you know, that's really great, especially after what, uh, you know, happened with the, after, you know, in the Demetrius Johnson fight, the, the way he won that fight, you know, beaten, in my opinion, the greatest fighter of all time. Um, and, He's one of those guys, if you look back to his record, I know our guy Capoz over on Twitter and other, you know, a lot of the Brazilians are saying that this guy is someone we should have been paying attention to. It's, it's someone that gone in against Demetrius Johnson. It wasn't like he was completely overmatched and he had a chance. And, you know, he absolutely proved that. And watching back some of his fights, he is like he is a really, really good fighter. And he's gone in there against uh, Yuya Wach- um, Waki Amatsu, who... I haven't watched a few of his fights as well. He's one of those guys, right, that I, I love as a fighter because even though, look, you, you look at his career now and he's 19 fights into it. He is, what, 27 years of age. He reminds, you know, he reminds me a little bit of Paddy Pimblett. Very good offensively, right? Good at what he does, but has, like, gaping holes in his game. Like, he's an unbelievable wrestler. Like, I, I love his takedowns. I think they're fantastic. He's a, a good offensive striker as well. If you ever watch him, he fights like an old-school boxer or something with, like, the front hand, like, wider. Do you, know, do you know those pictures you see like this where the hands are like that? He fights like one of them, but it's very effective. And he can bolt into that range extremely quickly and hits really, really hard. Defensively, though, he gets hit... Um, uh, he can get taken down as well in fights. But against Demetrius Johnson, you know, he fought Demetrius as well and he lost him. And this was back in 2019. 
but there was a scramble in that fight. And okay, Demetrius won most of the fight and he ended up getting the, the finish in the second round. Um, but Yuya won one of those scrambles against Demetrius in a fashion that I don't think I've ever seen anyone in in since Dominic Cruz back in the day, a decade ago, won a scramble against Demetrius Johnson. Even the likes of Henry Cejudo, you know, an Olympic gold medalist. That's how good this guy is. And I think at 27 years of age, okay, he's he's had a good few fights, but in over the next five or six fights, if he if he goes in there against Morais and is able to take him down, I think it'll be a tough night for Morais, honestly, because Morais does get taken down as well. Um, but look, this one, look, it's hard to say. I think, I think Watsuyamu has more, or Wakamatsu, sorry, has more holes in his game than Morais does. Although Morais has holes as well, I think mostly with his takedown defense. But it's it's a it's one of those ones where I think Morais's game offensively is better than <laughs> than, than you guys as well. When you're watching the fight, when you're going back watching these guys. What, what are you thinking watching both of them? What are you thinking of, of their games and how they match up against each other? I think with, with Wakamatsu, what you said, you hit the nail on the head, really. When I see him fight, he just fights with reckless abandon, when it's, whether it's going for the takedown, whether it's on the feet. You know, it's 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 100 miles an hour in, and I'm not sure too sure if he's thinking about... He's thinking about offense, not so much thinking about defense. He leaves his chin out there. When he's exiting, when whether it's from a takedown, whether it's from a striking exchange, he leaves his chin out there. And I'm just wondering if 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 Marais is going to try and take advantage of that in this fight. You want to be opening, looking up for openings on on the clinch. See, try and catch him over the top. You know, I worry for Wakamatsu in those exchanges in this fight, especially against someone like Adriano Marais, who has who. He he loves Marais himself loves to fight at distance, has excellent kicks, um, likes to keep his range, likes to dictate the pace of a fight, uh, whether he keeps it on the feet, whether he keeps it on the ground. Uh, you know, we've seen the boat and him do both against Demetrius Johnson. Um the X factor in these kind of fights as well is that indoor scramble and exchanges, you know, you can knee to the head, you can kick to the head. You know, you have to be very careful. And, and these guys are going to be used to be training and that and to be looking out. But like you said, with Wakamatsu, yeah, if you're not if you're not defensively sound, you're going to find yourself in trouble sooner or later. Now, Wakamatsu has been on a great run since he lost against Demetrius Johnson. He's won five. He's knocked out two of those five opponents and won the others by decision. You know, so he's coming in here high of confidence. He's a little piranha. He just chips away, chips away, chips away. And he keep you guessing on the feet. And when you think he's going to stand and bang with you, he'll take you down. I'm really impressed with his wrestling too, but I'm not too sure if he's going to be able to to counter wrestle Adrian Marais, uh, Adriano Marais in this fight. I think Marais is just a tiny little bit better in all aspects of his game, and I think I I, I feel that Marais is going to is going to catch him eventually, and is probably going to finish this fight. I I would tend to agree with everything you said there. I think the one area that Wakamatsu can win it is his wrestling, but you hit the nail on the head there. If Marais's counter wrestling is too good then I think he has very little chance. But look, he's a big shot as well. I, I think Marais, I haven't seen him up uh, alongside each other size-wise, but I think Marais is probably a lot bigger than him as well. And I think that'll play a, a big part in this. But, you know, Yuya needs to come out here, and I think he just needs to put him on his backside and wrestle him for the whole fight. And if he can do that, I think he can absolutely win because he's very good there. But I, I agree with you, I will be picking uh, Marais in, in that one as well. But it's it's an intriguing fight. The first round, I think, will, will tell a lot in that because... You know, and, and look, the cardio, you, you, the, the, look, the first round and maybe the last two rounds, I play, play an awful lot in that. No, I, I assume it's a five round fight. It is. It? So uh, if it was a three round fight, that'd be, a, that'd be a wise thing to say. But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to that one. And the main I event, mean, we have, as well. We have to fun. say about these fights as well, you know, they're not judged the same way as we're used to watching MMA yes. fights being judged. They're judged as a fight. And not round by round. So don't, don't get me started on judging. On <laughs> <laughs> that judge. could be a whole nother she and show could. podcast. It, so it, could. Could. it could. I it could. mean, it's 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 confusing enough to keep up to date with what we see. The in normal North judge, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and this one as well. So if you're if you're scratching your head at the end of these fights, wondering how the hell the fight was scored, yeah. if the fighter is doing well at the end of a fight. That means he's more than likely going to win this. That a, fight. a lot of so. people, a lot of people want MMA to be scored like this as well, you know. So mm -hmm. you know, if you like that, well, it's kind of like 
maybe the nat- that's maybe what a natural flow of a fight is, you know. And uh, I don't know. I kind of like the round by round. It makes it a little bit more technical and makes it a little bit more exciting as well. But mm-hmm. uh, it does change up the tactics in fights. Does, uh, yeah. You know, you, you can be a little bit conservative at the start and then turn it on towards the, towards the latter stages. And we've seen that time and time again with, with Asian MMA, Japanese MMA, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, indeed, 100%. Uh, all right, let's talk about the main event, Angela Lee versus uh, Stamp Fairtex. Uh, I was so impressed going back, back watching some of Stamp's fights. You know, it, this is... Uh, it, it's tough to say it's an old-school grappler versus striker fight because, you know, I think they're watching them through their career now over the last uh, couple of days, watching their fights and having watched watch a good bit of Angela Lee anyway in her career. Definitely, both of them have definitely improved. But Angela Lee... I think is very good on the ground. You know, she's a a lot of, what is she, uh, seven submissions on her 10 wins. Okay, Stamp ha- has only uh, three knockouts in her eight wins, but still at that weight class, that, it's a lot for that. When she came in uh, to the uh, the promotion in the Challenger Series, her first knockout was one, you could see it, it's up on YouTube, a knockout in 19 seconds with a head kick where she just folded her opponent. And that's the type of fighter she is. She's, you know, a Mai Tai stylist. She'll come out, she'll throw those kicks hard kick that front leg whereas Angela Lee she's she has been boxing a lot more in her recent fights I think and she has lost a couple of fights so I don't know if that's the reason for it or not but if Stamp can stop that takedown I think she'll win that fight on the feet if Angela can get the fight to the ground I think she'll probably win it on the ground although Stamp on the ground as well she's pretty good she won her last uh, fight via armbar um, so it's she's no mug there either I, I like watching Stamp Fairtex and then going over watching Angela Lee. You know, I'm sure Angela, I haven't seen the betting or anything or anything but yet. I'm sure Angela will be the favourite coming in here. But I don't know. I don't know. I, still, I think Stab, who's very, very young in her career, what, she's only 24 years of age, only had nine fights. I, I think her ceiling is very, very high now. Angela Lee's ceiling is very high as well. She's only 25 or 12 fights. So it's not like there's a big difference between them. I think this is a very, very even matchup, and it lit- it could go either way. It really, really could. A lot of it, I think, will come down to um, Stamps' ability to stop that takedown and how improved that part of her game uh, is uh, coming into this one. What, what do you think of it, Ian? How, how do you see it going? And who do you think who do you think will win that battle for the takedown? It's going to be interesting to see. Like you, you broke it down perfectly there. In Stamp Fairtex, uh, she's coming in here with an extensive striking background and has won uh, world titles in kickboxing and Muay Thai. Uh, has came over to one and done the exact same thing as well. But she made the jump over to mixed martial arts, and you know she she's done quite well since she's made that jump over. Like like you said, we've seen in her last fight, she got the arm bar, so she's shown those she's improving the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the grappling aspect of her game as well. So, you know, she, uh, I, I believe she, uh, Rito Pogat was, she won the uh, a tournament uh, in mixed martial arts. So she's coming up against some good competition. For me, with Angela Lee, it's, she hasn't fought since 2019. So she's she's not coming in here as that active as Stamp Fairtex, who's, who fought three times last year. So, I mean, I'm wondering, is that going to be uh, an aspect in the fight? And also, you mentioned about Angela Lee's boxing as well. I worry about her boxing and I worry about her striking in this fight because she doesn't move her head an awful lot. She 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 keeps stagnant. She keeps on the line. She doesn't move her head. And so against someone like Stamp Fairtex, she cannot do that because Stamp, she throws with heat and she can hurt you. So I think it's going to be Angela Lee trying to implement the grappling, Stamp Fartex trying to keep it sprawl and brawl, if you want to say it that way. And whoever can implement their game plan better is is uh, is going to be the winner of this fight, obviously. Yeah. Angela Lee, for me, I think, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see, okay, she hasn't fought in a couple of years, but what is she going to bring new to the table? Has she been exactly. working on her striking? Yeah. How... That, that, like, with that age as well, isn't that's a massive thing? Because like, well, and, yeah, Angela Lee came onto the scene and was the youngest world champion in mixed martial arts history at only eighteen years of age for one FC. She's she's now in her mid twenties. She's like she's been on the scene for a long time. You know, in certain ways, maybe she just took that time to work on her game and there's nothing wrong with doing that scene as she started so young in her career as well you know she she comes over from from the famous lee family her brother christian lee also fights for one one championship as well so i mean this kind of makes the fight 
a lot more exciting for me as well to see what kind of new wrinkles that Angela Lee has added to her game. But this is a fight that is massively deserving to be a top of the bill here. And it's going to be a super exciting fight. It's going to be fast paced. It's going to be up and down. And I'm really excited to see who's going to come out on top. A hundred percent. And it's all of those as well. Like, last thing on this, but uh, your thing about uh, the improvements have been made in the two years. Sometimes people think they've made improvements as well. Come in and start striking, and the next thing they get knocked out. So uh, that's it. We, you, we, you don't we'll know. Well it works. Yeah, you don't know. You don't, don't know. know. If, that's, it's crazy. And that's, that's what makes it. That's what makes it so exciting in this fight. It's 100%, brilliant. Hundred percent. Right. Let's get to it. Demetrius Johnson versus Rod Tang. Ah, oh, this. Look, I, I'm not maybe the biggest fan of these things in the world. And do you know what? I am a fan of them. Like the, the, the kind of the mixed rules fights. But the McGregor Mayweather thing just ruined it for me. Because there's like, oh, who would win if it was only kicks? Who would win if it was only punches with four ounce gloves? It was in the octagon. If you could... And that ruined it for me. I it ruined the fun of it. But I feel like maybe enough time has passed now. And we've kind of gotten over that a little bit. And when this was announced, I know we've done this because this fight was supposed to happen last year. And we did a podcast about this uh, back then over in Severe MMA. But I feel like even more time has passed now. Even more anticipation is building. And this is this is going to be unbelievable. So what's happening here is first round um, kickboxing. Is it a Muay Thai? Anyway, stand up. Second round is uh, MMA. Third round, stand up four round MMA. So it's a four round fight uh, between Demetrius Shantz and the greatest mixed martial arts fighter of all time against Rotang. You'll tell us about him here Ian, in a second. A really, really unbelievable Muay Thai kickboxer. So basically it's going to be Demetrius trying to survive not get knocked out for the first round. Then if it gets to the second round, it'll be Rotang not trying to get submitted or knocked out with kicks on the ground or whatever it might be. And then I don't know what happens after that if we get to the third and fourth round. But this is just fun. Like it's one of those fights. I always say it with with promotions like One FC and and Bellator and others. Like Bellator, the fact that they didn't bring in a cruiserweight division that time when they had loads of cruiserweight fighters, just they weren't making themselves different. You know, they weren't doing something to set themselves apart. And I feel like this from one is something that sets them apart. Is something that I will definitely be tuning in for. It's hard to get me to tune in for fights if. You know, these days, unless I, you know, I need to tune in, unless I'm covered up, because I'm, I, I'm working at it now, and you are too, Ian, and we're, we're watching so many fights every week. If there's an extra card on somewhere, uh, if I can't, if I don't have to tune into it, I probably won't be, but I will be tuning into this because this is something different. This is something special, and I'm hyped for it. What about you? I, I, I know you're looking forward to it. I didn't even have to ask you. Oh, my God. I cannot <laughs> wait for these sites. I mean, look at we see fights at the highest level in, in North America and I love them as well. But I think these kind of fights and, and historically these kind of fights that used to be put on in Pride FC back in the day, they just added to the overall spectacle of mixed martial arts. And I absolutely love these fights. I mean, it's the perfect timing for Demetrius Johnson to have a fight like this, too. He's at, he's at the end of his career. He doesn't need to prove anything in mixed martial arts anymore. This is something that obviously gets him going, that gets him training, something that something that's going to scare him as well. Because he's going in there with Rod Tang. And Rod Tang, at the age of 24, has amassed 319 Muay Thai fights, 267 wins, 42 losses, and 10 draws. That Rod Tang fought his first Muay Thai fight when he was eight years of age. You're thinking, that's crazy. Well, when you're coming from Thailand and you're fighting in Bangkok, and that's when he moved to fight. He moved to Bangkok, I think, when he was in his early teens, 14 or 15. And when you're in Bangkok, you have two big stadiums there. You have the Lupini Stadium and you have the, Rad the, the Rajadamarian Stadium, which is the, the two big places where you can fight. And if you're not fighting in one stadium one night, you're fighting in the other stadium the other night. There's fights going on seven days of the week in Bangkok. I was in the, the Rajadamarian Stadium in, in February 2020. I got to see a few fights there. And, you know, that's what it is. They live and breed Thai boxing over there. And, and Rod Tang has been up there and he's been the champion of both stadiums. That's what the big thing is over there. You fight for titles and you, and then you fight for the champion of the, at each weight class of the stadium. So you defend the stadium, you defend the belt, and it's how, all about how many days. You could be fighting two, three, four days in a row sometimes over there. So if you're asking yourself, how can a man 
uh, get so many fights in such a short period of time. Well, you're fucking fighting every single day over there. So it's 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 absolutely nuts. Now, that's what Demetrius Johnson is facing for the first three minutes of this fight coming up. And that's what excites me. And that's what this fight is going to be about, is can Demetrius Johnson last against someone with the striking press of Rod Tang? And if that fight, if the three minutes are up and we move to MMA, we're going to be asking the same question. But I don't think the question is going to be... It, it, the, the, the first question of will Mighty Mouse last the pace for the three minutes is a lot harder question than if Rod Tang is going to last the pace. Because I don't think Rod Tang has been spending his camp learning how to sprawl or, or doing that. Rod Tang is going to come in here and he's going to give Mighty Mouse... Three minutes of absolute hell. And it's all up to whether Mighty Mouse can take that three minutes of hell. And that's what adds to the spectacle of this fight. And that's what has me so excited about this fight as well. Uh, I feel like he can survive it. Now, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I don't know why I say that or anything. I watch some Rod Tang's fights. He, he, do you know, the, the, a lot of the Thai fighters, when they are fighting in those stadiums as well, they are kind of like... They're taught to start a bit slow, you know, so the bets can come in and fight in the second round as well. Yeah. So it is a little bit of a change for him as well to having to fight. And I'm sure, look, he's fought in more high level fights as well. And that's not the way he fights all the time. But as you said, that was the way he br was brought up. And that's the way, you know, it's natural for him to work his way into a fight. So to have to come out and go hell for letter for three minutes is very, very interesting. Like, I'm interested to see what Demetrius does. Like, does he try to make it a dirty fight in terms of, like, hold on to him? And I know it's my tie, isn't it, for the first uh, three minutes? So you that's, can that's do a right, bit of yeah. clinching. You can do a bit of... Like, Demetrius is, is no mug there now against the white tie, a specialist like Rotag. It's a different story, but I am... Um, like, that three minutes, that three minutes is just going to be all out like what's going to happen it's just going to be pure excitement really and it feels like it feels like we're promoting this for for Shatry or something here but i you know the two of us we talked about this before uh you know before this week and months ago as well and i think the two of us were giddy back then as well. how so could you not be excited you, about you this i mean be, yeah. <laughs> i think that it's after being held back so much at this stage now it's just like oh you've teased us with this fight yeah. it didn't happen you've teased <laughs> us with this fight so we we're like chomping we at it. the bit to see you. we need this if they, I, I tell you i might go offline if, if so, i don't even want to mention it but if something bad happens and this fight doesn't go down this week i might have to take a break from my mind it's just not going to be happening Let's forget about COVID for a while. Let's forget yeah. about all of that. Let's just have this fight at the weekend. So, yeah, I can't wait for it. I think um, I think a lot of people can as well. All right, Ian, we, we, will, uh, we will leave it there. We, we went through the whole card. It feels like we could spend another hour and go through this whole card. There is so much stuff on it. But, uh, yeah, check it out anyway. I'm sure Sherdog will have loads of stuff coming up this week and the results and everything like that. Uh, it's You'll find it on YouTube and the One Championship uh, links uh, and all that to, uh, to get the card and get the main card. And I actually was looking here on their website and they have a great kind of link to where you can watch it in all different countries so it's uh it's handy enough to get it there right i will leave it there thanks to everybody for watching ian thank you very much for joining me follow him over on twitter at ioneal mma one of the the best journalists right now covering the sport uh in europe even though he's over in canada so if you're up late at night and you're on american or canadian time there you have your european correspondent right there uh following me doing absolutely great work and i appreciate you joining me today and thanks everyone for watching as i said listening my name is sean sheehan for sherdog.com Let's see you all next time.